Hi, good day. Let us learn about the nervous system. The nervous system integrates and controls the various life processes in the body. No function in the body can be done without the help of the other existing functions. For example, walking is impossible without the integrated and coordinated functions of the bones and muscles. Integration and coordination are made possible when the nervous system relays messages in the form of electrical signals to different parts of the body where coordination and integration are required. The electrical signals or impulses are sent to various parts of the body by the basic structural units of the nervous system called nerve cells or neurons. Electrical signals are generated when some changes in the environment of the organism occurs. These changes called stimuli cause the organisms to respond. The neurons is made up of two basic parts, the cell body and processes. The cell body bursts the nucleus and the rest of the parts of a typical cell. Surrounding the cell body are processes divided into two distinct parts, the dendrites and axon. The dendrites are the short, highly branched processes. They are the first to receive the signal from the stimulus and convey it to the cell body. The axon is the long, less branched process. It conveys the impulse away from the cell body. Some neurons have a branched axon. It is called a collateral. Axons may be myelinated or non-myelinated. Myelinated axons are wrapped with the myelin sheath in some parts. The myelin sheath is secreted by the Schwann cell. The myelin wrapping is not continuous. There are gaps in between. The gap in the myelin sheath is called the nodes of Rovier. Non-myelinated axons lack the myelin sheath. In the transmission of impulses, the impulses simply cascade along the non-myelinated axon while the impulses jump from one node to the next along a myelinated axon. Neurons are classified according to the structure and function. According to structure, neurons may be unipolar, bipolar, and multipolar. Unipolar neuron has a cell body and a single nerve process. This type of neuron is present during the early stages of development. Bipolar neuron has an elongated body and nerve processes projecting from its side, while multipolar neuron has a cell body surrounded with highly branched dendrites. According to function, neurons are classified into a sensory, motor, and central neuron. A sensory neuron receives impulses from the receptor organ and conveys them to the nerve center. Receptor organs are those that receive the electrical signals or impulses. These are the different sense organs in the body. There are two nerve centers in the body, the brain and the spinal cord. A motor neuron receives impulses from the nerve centers and conveys them to the effector organ. Effector organs are those that execute the response. These are the muscles and glands of the body, while the central neurons are found within the nerve center. A central neuron is an interneuron that serves as the connecting link between a sensory neuron and a motor neuron. In a three neuron system, each neuron is separated from each other by a microscopic space called synapse. The synapse is the junction or the relay center between a neuron. Synapse also exists between a neuron and an effector cell. Each of the cells in this three neuron system communicates with one another through a neurotransmitter, a chemical substance released by the first neuron. The two most common neurotransmitters are acetylcholine and norepinephrine. Once the neurotransmitter has crossed the synapse, an enzyme breaks it down and the neuron is inactivated. In the absence of this enzyme, the neuron would remain activated. The nervous system has two major divisions, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. This division of the nervous system is made up of central or interneurons that coordinate and process all the incoming and outgoing impulses. 
The peripheral nervous system is composed of nerves and ganglia that connects the brain and the spinal cord to the sides of the body. A nerve is a bundle of dendrites and axons. Ganglia are masses of cell bodies of the nerve bundles. Ganglia and nerves are the vast communication network of the peripheral nervous system. Let us discuss first the central nervous system. The central nervous system serves as the main processing center for the entire nervous system. The first component of the central nervous system is the brain. The brain is the largest mass of nervous tissue composed of billions of nerve cells. It is composed of chambers or ventricles filled with cerebrospinal fluid. The brain is divided into three regions, the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. The forebrain is composed of the cerebrum, thalamus, and hypothalamus. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. It is highly folded. The folds or gyri increase the brain surface area. The cerebrum governs all sensory and motor activities of the body. It is divided into right and left hemispheres, each of which has different functions. The left hemisphere is responsible for verbal and analytic skills and controls the functions and activities of the right side of the body, while the right hemisphere is responsible for creative thought and the functions and activities of the left side of the body. The two hemispheres are connected by a thick band of nerve fibers called corpus callosum. Such connection enables the two hemispheres to function together. The surface of the two hemispheres is divided into four lobes. The parietal lobe is the primary sensory areas. The frontal lobe controls the voluntary movement. The occipital lobe is the association areas for things that are seen. And the temporal lobe is the association area of what is being heard. Thought, learning, and personality are also controlled by the occipital and temporal lobes of the brain. The thalamus acts as the relay center for sensory impulses except the sense of smell. The hypothalamus functions in maintaining homeostasis like maintaining blood pressure, body temperature, feeding activities, emotions, and fight or flight responses. It also serves as a link between the nervous and endocrine systems. The hindbrain is composed of the cerebellum and medulla oblongata. The cerebellum is the part that coordinates all voluntary activities and helps maintain balance. The medulla oblongata is the part of the brain that articulates with the spinal cord through the foramen magnum on one end and with the pons on the other end. The medulla oblongata is the center for regulating cardiovascular functions, breathing, digestion, reflexes, and coordination of movement. The pons is located between the midbrain and the medulla oblongata. It links various parts of the brain serving as the relay center of the medulla and the cerebrum. The midbrain consists of four masses of tissues located between the forebrain and the hindbrain. The upper two masses are involved in visual reflexes and the two lower masses are associated with hearing functions. The midbrain is also responsible in maintaining postural reflexes and motor movements. The next one is called the structure of the spinal cord. The spinal cord it's the tubular mass of nervous tissue that is connected to the modula oblongata on the upper end and to the last vertebral bone on the lower end. It is referred to as the continuation or extension of the brain. A cross section of the spinal cord shows the presence of a dark H-shaped region and an outer white region. The white color is attributed to the myelin sheath that serves as the axon that covers the axon of the nerve cells in this region. The dark color is an indication that this region is composed purely of nerve cell bodies and dendrites. At the center of the spinal cord is a hollow space called the spinal canal, lined with ependymal cells and filled with cerebrospinal fluid, the same fluid that fills the ventricles of the brain. The spinal cord has two important functions, to carry information to and from the brain, and to govern simple responses called reflexes. Let us proceed now to the second division of the nervous system. This is called the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system consists of nerve outside the brain and a spinal cord that carry impulses from the central nervous system to various parts of the body. There are two main divisions of the peripheral nervous system. The somatic nervous system 
and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is associated with the voluntary control of body movements and has two main parts. The spinal nerves carry the motor and sensory signals between the spinal cord and the body, while the cranial nerves are the nerve fibers that carry information into and out of the brainstem. The autonomic nervous system is the system that is associated with the involuntary control of body movements and has two main divisions, the sympathetic and parasympathetic. The sympathetic is activated when the body is in dynamic role or stress. For example, increased heart rate and breathing. While the parasympathetic maintains body functions and restores the body to normal or relaxed mode. How does your nervous system work? This system is like a network that relays messages back and forth from the brain to the various parts of the body. It transmits information through the spinal cord, which extends from the brain down through the back and consists of fine nerves that branch out to every organ and body part. When a message reaches the brain from any part of the body, the brain commands the body to respond. You can think of your nervous system as a relay team where one runner passes the object to another runner. Relatively, you have nerve cells handing its information to the next cell, which passes the information to another cell. Finally, the information reaches into its destination and a reaction takes place. For instance, if you hold a needle and accidentally prick your fingers, the nerves in your skin release a message of pain to your brain. Your brain, in response to the signal, commands the muscles in your hand to pull away. This split-second relay inside your body happens in a much shorter period than it took you to read about it. If this is your first time watching my video, make sure you hit the subscriber button. Thank you for watching.